hear that? Come on. Did I hear what? That whistle. Why, that's the Rinso White whistle. Yeah, and Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White. And Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, Victor Moore. <laughs> Visit the DeWent household out in Kansas City, Missouri, just at the end of a working day, you would probably walk in on a scene like this. Charles, Mother's home. You see, Mrs. DeWent wrote us. The Rinso whistle is our way of telling the children we're home from work. And of course, that isn't all the Rinso whistle means to the DeWent family, with two active youngsters, Charles and Elise. Mrs. DeWent finds Rinso a mighty important item. On wash day, Rinso saves plenty of time and work. And in the dishpan, Rinso's soapy rich suds chase grease and clinging food particles in a flash. Try Rinso yourself, won't you? Tomorrow. And now, our stars, Amos and Andy, and their guest, Victor Moore. <laughs> Love has finally come to Andy Brown. It has come in the shape of Yvonne Jefferson, and truly a lovely shape. Tonight, Andy is on his way to the Harlem branch of the Honesty Insurance Company, where Yvonne is employed, to surprise her when she gets through work. Amos is driving Andy over in the taxi cab. Yeah, Amos, Yvonne is sure going to be surprised when I call for her. She don't expect me. Oh, yeah, it's eight o'clock, uh... You sure she going to be there this time of night, Anna? Oh, yeah. She's a hard-working gal. She get overtime by working late, you know. Oh, I see. Uh, you really crazy about this gal, ain't you, Anna? Oh, I'll say I am. Where can you find a gal that's as sweet as she is, charming, cultured, and make overtime? <laughs> Tell you the truth, I was going to ask her to marry me. You mean you really going to take the plunge, Anna? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, here's the building here, Anna. Honesty Insurance Company. Yeah, come on, Amos, come on. Yeah, I don't see no lights in none of the offices. Yeah, well, she work in the room in the back. Oh, you're going to the back door, huh? No, no, there ain't no back door. I'm going up the alley and stick my head in the window and surprise her. Oh. Only you better come along and boost me up because it's a high window. Okay, son. Say, that's a high-class-looking box of candy you got there on your arm. Yeah, well, I have this good-looking box, and I done filled it up with dime store candy. And then I put a ribbon around it. Yeah, well, ain't she going to know it's dime store candy even though you got it in that fancy box there? Oh, no. The only way she could tell is by eating it, but uh, I has done read two and a half dollars on the bottom of the box. Oh, yeah. So, you see, uh, her eyes will pop out at the price before her tongue can pop out at the candy. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, there's the window there now. Boost me up on this ash can so I can see what... All right, get a hold in. Hold on. There we go. Oh, me. I wonder how Romeo ever got up on that balcony. Uh, wait a minute now. Yeah, that's okay. What's that's okay. Is she all right now? Yeah. Shh, shh. I can see her. She's there by herself. And she's going to... Uh... Uh-oh. This ain't good. I don't believe it. I see it with my own eyes, and I still don't believe it. Amos, get me down. Yeah, come on. What's the matter, Andy? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Come on, come on. Well, where's we going? Ain't you going to surprise Andy? She done beat me to it, Amos. She done surprise me. Well, hello there, Andy. As you see the morning's newspaper yet? Hello, Kingfish. I ain't no mood for papers. Yeah, see here in the headlines... Uh, Say, Honesty Insurance Company robbed of $796. Uh, ain't that the place your girlfriend works at, uh, Yvonne Jefferson? Yeah, she worked there. Mm-hmm. Kingfish, uh, you think the police is going to catch the one that done it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a sure thing, and yeah. The police do everything signs terrific these days. They do. Oh, yeah. I see the moving picture once where the only clue was a piece of hair. They analyzed the hair and they found some special kind of tonic on it. Then they analyzed the tonic and find out what drugs they were bought at. Then they analyzed the druggist. 
Boy, I tell you, from one piece of hair, you ain't never seen so much arresting in all your life. Uh, the whole thing ought to be a good lesson to criminals. Yeah, what's the lesson? Always wear a hat when you go on a job. You know what <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, listen, Kingfish, here comes Amos. Uh, I wonder if I could be alone with him. I want to speak to him about something confidential. Oh, sure thing, Andrew. Yeah. Well, hello there, Kingfish. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Well, hi, Amos. Uh, just leaving here. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. See you boys later. So long. Amos, did you see the paper? Uh, you mean about the honesty insurance company robbery? Yeah, I did, Andy. Amos, I'm going crazy here. I got to talk to you. Listen, when I looked in that window last night, I seen Yvonne take some money out of the safe and put it in her pocketbook. Amos, what must I do? Well, Andy, you has just got to tell the police, huh? Yeah, but how can I do that? I was in love with Yvonne. Andy, if she took that money, then you was in long in love with the wrong gal. Oh, no. Not if she's got $796, I am. Well, now, look. Now, now let's face the thing here. You done seen something, and you want to know what you must do about it. Now, I done told you what you must do. And I feel this way about it, Andy. It is your duty to report to the police what you done seen. No matter who you see do it, that's your duty, son. Yeah, I was afraid you was going to say that. I guess you're right, though, Amos. I got to tell them. Oh, me. Poor little Yvonne. Yeah. Yesterday, we was two little lovebirds. Now she's going to be a jailbird, and I'm going to be a stool pigeon. <laughs> well, Brother Henry, I see that your gal has done been arrested. Yeah. Yeah, according to the newspaper here, what would they say there? Say something about that she'd been indicted, I believe, and uh, they done let out on bail, ain't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it seems that uh, some cousin of hers put up the bail for according to the newspaper article. Yeah, listen, Kingfish, uh, you knows about the law. Tell me this, uh, if a party of the first part tell the police, which is the party of the second part, what he see the party of the third part do, do I have to appear in court against her as the party of the fourth part? That's some party you got there, son. Uh, let me think here now. You know, that comes under the America's Hippos Witness Law. Yeah, that's what it does. All that versus white stuff. I remember that law, yeah. yeah. Now, wait a minute. Let me think here. Uh, I know of a case just like that. Uh, the case of the state of Ohio versus my brother-in-law. Now, let me see. How did that go, uh... They wanted him to appear as a witness, and he didn't want it. He flatly refused because he knew that they couldn't do nothing about it. Yeah, well, what happened? I don't know. I'm going to ask him as soon as he get out of jail. I do that. <laughs> now, look, listen here, Andrew. Here's what you better... Uh, wait a minute. Who is this coming in here? Uh, 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 yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? Hello. My name is Victor Moore. <laughs> Is there a Mr. Andrew Brown around? Well, 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 what you want to see him about, mister? Yeah, I'm going to beat it, Andrew. I'll see you later. Okay, Kingfish, okay. Uh-huh. Huh? He called you Andy. Then you are Mr. Brown. I know it. Well, so what? I know it before you did. <laughs> well, would it be all right if I sat down? Uh, sh- show, show. Go ahead. Sit down, uh. In connection with what can I do something for you about? Well, it's just a little matter of, uh, I don't know quite how to put it, but I just have to offer you this summons. Well, thanks just the same, but I have got, uh, excuse me for protruding, but, uh, did you say, uh-huh, uh, is it too late to say that I ain't Andrew Brown? Well, here's the summons. Well, I ain't gonna accept it. Oh, please? No. <laughs> Pretty please? No, sir. I ain't accepting no summonses. Well, I tried to ask you nicely, but it looks like I'll have to get tough. Well, it ain't gonna do you no good. Go ahead, get tough. All right. Now, listen, bud. Either you take this summons or I'll shove it down your throat. If you don't object. 
I'm telling you once more, you was wasting your time. But I'm supposed to serve you with a summons, and if I don't, it puts me in an awful bad light. Well, the light is better outside anyway. Goodbye. I wish you'd take it. You know, I always thunk that they sent out great, big, strong, husky, tough guys to serve summonses. But instead of that, they send you. Well, don't you know there's a war on? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Moore, I'm going to put my cards on the table. The reason I ain't going to accept this summonses from you is because if I do, that means that I got to go to court and testify against the woman I love. Yes, well, if you don't accept it, it means that I'll most likely get fired. I'll be a failure, and my wife will leave me, and she'll leave me all alone and never come back to me. Well, gee, Mr. Moore, I didn't know all Gosh, I wouldn't want your wife to leave you. Well, you know, it might not be a bad idea. If I... <laughs> oh, no, 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 sir. I, I wouldn't want your wife to leave you. I'll tell you what, give me the summonses. No, I don't think I could do that because then you'd have to go to court and your girl would go to jail. I'll just tear it up. Uh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna have your wife leave you. Give me that summer. No, I won't give it to you. I, I won't send the girl to the penitentiary. I'll starve first. Is you gonna give me that paper? Is I gonna have to take it away from you? You're not man enough to take it away from me. If I don't want to serve a summons, a mule couldn't pull it away from me. Oh, is that so? I couldn't, couldn't I? Give me that. Come on, no. give me that. Give me it. I will not. I won't give it to you. Give me that. No, you you let me keep it. Oh, you shouldn't have taken it. Listen, mister. Let me tell you something. You is too soft-hearted. Take my advice and get out of this summonses business. You don't belong in it. Oh, is that so? (laughs) I've been serving him for 40 years, and I never saw this method fail yet. So long, sucker. Oh, hello, Gabby. Oh, come on in, Eddie. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. All right. Say, listen, uh, you've been reading about my gal that done got arrested, ain't you? Oh, yes, indeed. Been reading all about it. Been reading all about it. Yeah, well, uh, you as a lawyer, uh, do you think they're going to send her to jail? Well, I don't say they is, Andy, but if I was her, if I was her, I wouldn't buy no spring outfit. Yeah. Well, uh, you see, I was in a funny spot, Gabby, and I'd sure like to know what to do about this trial. You see, on one hand, i got to go to court and testify against Yvonne. And on the other hand, I don't want to see her get convicted. Uh, what must I do, Gabby? Well, as I see it, Andy, as I see it, it's a clear-cut case of homicide. Homicide? Yeah. you got to go home and figure out whose side you're on. That's homicide if I ever hear Look, Gabby, uh, I was wondering if you got any kind of ideas on what kind of defense she can put up in court for taking the money out of the safe. Wait a second, Andy. Wait a second. I got it. I know just defense she ought to put up. Just what she must tell the jury. Yeah? What must she tell them? Tell them she thought it was Confederate money and she was taking it home as a souvenir. <laughs> Gabby's legal advice isn't much help to Andy in his dilemma. We'll learn what he does about it in just a moment. When you've two active youngsters and a husband who's a garage mechanic, you've a full-time job just keeping the family fed and in clean clothes. But Mrs. DeWent of Kansas City, Missouri, does that and more. She holds a regular job in a war industry besides. You can see that efficiency methods are a must with Mrs. DeWent. No wonder she wrote us. I've used Rinso for my family wash and kitchen use for over 12 years. And you can bet your best bonnet that Rinso's been a big helping hand to Mrs. DeWent. Why, with Rinso's soapy rich suds on the job, it takes as little as a 10-minute soaking to get clothes dazzling clean. Then a few quick finger rubs on extra grimy places, and they're ready to rinse. Yes, Mrs. DeWent's got plenty of reason to be proud of the wash she hangs out. Every piece. Yes, Rinso White. And washable colors fresh and bright, safely, after dozens of washings. You see, Rinso's soapy rich suds get out more dirt, from whites and colors. You better get Rinso next wash day. And now, back to Amos and Andy. Well, 
Well, today is the first day of the trial of Yvonne Jefferson. The Kingfish and Henry Van Porter are in the hall outside the courtroom waiting for court to be convened. Well, Kingfish, are you all set for the big trial? Uh, yes, Henry. Uh, it ought to start in a second. That courtroom sure is crowded in there. Yes, it is. I hope we get seats. Yeah, well, I was all set. You see, I got my wife inside holding two seats down in front. She kind of spread herself out, you know, reserving both places. Yes, well, your wife can do that. Now, ain't it the truth? Uh, wait a minute, sir. Your wife ain't no demitassel herself, you know. Well, now, listen here, Kingfish. Uh, say, I... fellas, uh, you ain't seen Andy, has you? No. Uh, no, Amos, uh, I ain't seen him for five days. Uh, what you so excited about? Yes, what's the matter? Well, nobody's seen him for five days. The trial has started already, and he ain't here yet. Will you please like... tell all those of you who are going into the courtroom better get in there? The trial's been out for five minutes. Oh, well, uh, that must mean that Andy has done a ride. Come on, fellas. Yes, come, come on. on. And I say to you, members of the jury, this is a clear-cut case of grand larceny. And there's no testimony the defense can present which will refute this. I would like to call the first witness to the stand, George Stevens, Kingfish of the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Oh, yeah, sir. Coming right up. Got you just in time, yeah, sir. Coming right up, yeah. Mr. Stevens, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? Oh, I do. I sure do. Got my integrity right here with me, yeah, sir. I do, yeah. Sit down, Stevens. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Now then, what can you tell the court in regard to the character of the defendant? Oh, uh, you mean the gal that stole the money from... Objection! Mr. Stade. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the witness will confine himself to answering the questions put to him. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, put that question again, please, Mr. Prosecutor. Prosecutor! Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah. The question, Stevens, has to do with the character of Yvonne Jefferson. No. What do you know about her? Well, uh, mister, if I can't say something good about a person, I never say nothing. So in her case, I shuts up, you see. You... Uh, on the other hand, I have known her for a while, and frankly, I wouldn't trust her with a hot stove on a dark night. Objection! Okay, a cold stove on a dark night. Objection! Sustained. You may step down, Mr. Stevens. Yes, well, I've done the best of good. Now, give me another crack at it. I might do better here. Step down, Stevens. Oh, yes, sir. Get him down. Get him down. Get him down. <laughs> will, uh, will Andrew H. Brown please take the sand? The court will be cleared if order is not maintained. Swear the witness in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not much truth to help you? So help me. Brown? How long have you known the defendant? Uh, who, me? Oh, uh, oh uh, 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 we as old friends, we, we, we practically growed up together lately. How long have you known her? Four weeks. We growed up fast. You... <laughs> did, uh, did you see the defendant at approximately 8 o'clock on the evening of December 21st, 1944, at the Honesty Insurance Company? Well, uh, uh, me and Amos were... Answer yes or no! Uh, uh, uh can I have a glass of water? You... <laughs> Clerk, pour the witness a glass of water. Yes, sir. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Oh, boy, was I thirsty. Brown, tell the court in your own words just what transpired on the evening of December 21st at the Honesty Insurance Company. Yes, well, I had a box of candy for her, so I went round in the back of the insurance company to surprise her through the window. I climbed up on the ash can and I looked in. And when you got up on the ash can, Brown... Could you see the defendant through the window? Oh, yes, sir. Tell the court exactly what you saw. Uh, well, when I looked through the window, I see the, uh, uh, uh can I have another glass of water? Yes, sir. <laughs> Order in this court. Order. Here's your water, Mr. Brown. Yeah, thank you, thank you. The court would appreciate it if the witness would take a long drink, so we won't be bothered in the near future. Mm, yes, sir, yes. Sir. All right, now, Brown. Tell us what you saw. Uh, uh, where was I? On top of the ash can. What'd you see? Well, uh, I saw... Excuse the... me for a moment. Can the defense ask the witness one question? Well, this is highly irregular, but if the prosecution has no objection, the court has none. No objection? You may answer the question, Brown. Judge, if I object here, would you sustain it? No! Okay, okay. <laughs> defense attorney may ask the question. Mr. Brown... When you looked through that window from the top of the ash can, is it not true that you saw your wife in that room? Yes, sir, that's true. That's true. Do you mean to tell the court that you did not see the defendant, Yvonne Jefferson? Yes, sir, I see her, too. You? I see them both at the same time because they're both the same people. Me and her got married this morning. What do you... If the court, please... 
The defense moves to strike out the testimony of this witness, Andrew Brown, on the grounds that a man is disqualified by law from testifying for or against his wife. Yes, that is the law. The witness will step down, and the court reporter will strike out his testimony, and the jury is instructed to disregard what he has said. You are excused, Mr. Brown. Yeah, do that mean I ain't got to tell nobody about me seeing her steal the money? <laughs> Say, Shorty, uh, uh, has you seen Andy? Andy? Uh, why, can't you find him? Uh, no, ain't nobody seen him since he left the courtroom yesterday. Not even his wife. Mm. And being at your barber shop, it was right next to his office, I figured you might have seen him go in there. Well, Andy, Andy was in here a little while ago when he said goodbye to me. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. Say, Shorty, uh, did he tell you where he was going? Yeah, he, he, he said he was catching a train to San Francisco. Uh, he, he was going to take a pullman to New Hampshire, uh, he, he, he had up a bullet going to Louisiana. Uh, he, he was catching the sleep with the Chicago. Uh, no reservations. <laughs> well, now, now, Shorty, uh, pull yourself together. Now, listen, uh, was he really going away? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember now. He, he told me he was catching a boat. Catching a boat, huh? Mm. That must mean that he down at one of the docks. Yeah, so that's where they leave for most of the time. Yeah, look here. Mm. I was going to get Amos and go down there right now. I wonder how far he figured on going. Did he have much stuff with him, Shorty? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he was carrying, uh, carrying everything he owned. He, he had one of them big suitcases, uh, two of them big traveling bags. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he had like a big steamer trunk. Uh, he had two big wards, uh, just a shoebox. <laughs> Uh, now, I done looked all around. This is the only dock where the boat is leaving today. Now, and it must be around here someplace. Yeah, this boat here goes through the Panama Canal, somebody told me. I just wish I knew why Andy was going away alone. There's something awful wrong about this whole thing, Kingfish. Yeah, he done got married to that gal to save her. And he ain't seen her since yesterday in the courtroom. You know, if he is running away from something, it looked like a... Wait a minute. Look, Amos, look. Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's Andy over there now at the ticket window. Come on, Kingfish. Yeah, that's him. Come on. Come on. Let's get over there. Come on. Say, Andy. Andy. Hey, Andy. Hey, hey Kingfish. Uh, what, what, what are you doing down here? Oh, nothing, Andy. Nothing. Uh, we just uh, trying to walk around. We ain't trying to mess in your business, nothing. Uh, we just wanted to say goodbye. Uh, well, goodbye. I was off to the South Seas. And Amos, I want to tell you something. You has been a good friend. Uh-huh. I'm going to send you a coconut. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, Brother and I just come down to say goodbye to you, too, you know. Yeah, well, goodbye to you, too. Uh, say, Andy, uh, just while we're standing here, just tell us nothing about the wedding. Uh, you know, when one of my friends usually gets married, why, I like to hear all about it, how it worked out and everything, you know. Tell us about it. Yeah, tell us about it, Andy. You got time before your boat goes. Well, it was just a simple ceremony. Uh, mm-hmm, not the best kind. Simple ceremonies for simple people. Yeah, they good, all right. Well, we went to this justice of the peace, and he stood in front of us. And Yvonne was on one side of me, and uh, justice's wife was on the other side. And behind me was Yvonne's cousin with the gun, and there was some... Organ music. Uh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Uh, what did you say about a fellow with a gun, Andy? Did I say that? Oh, me, I ain't had no business saying that. Come on now, Andy, talk. Now, come on, talk. Yeah, Andy, you was forced into that marriage. Ain't that right? Now, tell the truth, Andy. Wasn't you forced into that? Amos, please. Their cousins say if I said anything, they'd find me floating down the river. And you know I can't float a stroke. <laughs> Yeah, well, we ain't going to let him get away with nothing like that. Now, is we, Kingfish? No, sir, we ain't. Come on, Ender. We are going to get this marriage null and voided and canceled on top of that. Therefore, in view of the fact that said Andrew Brown was forced into this marriage under the threat of bodily harm, I do hereby declare said marriage or null. Who gets the custody of the $796? <laughs> that you can legally testify again, Brown. Will you please tell us what you saw from the top of the ice can? Mm, yes, sir. I, I, uh, but first, can I have a glass of water? The defendant, 
Devon Jefferson, having been found guilty, is hereby remanded to the custody of the sheriff and ordered held for sentence. Court adjourned. Well, 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 Andy, put it there, son, put it there. I guess that is over now. Yeah, thank goodness that's over. As you sure they done caught that cousin fella that was the best man at my wedding? Oh, yeah, oh, he is in jail, all right, Andy. Oh. Only he wasn't no cousin of Yvonne's. He was her real sweetheart. He was? Yeah. Well, Amos, that Spurns has done taught me one thing. No more women. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say oh, that. Oh, boy, I was off a of women for life. That's the stuff. They is poison. So help me, if I ever look at another woman again, if I ever look at... at uh, uh, what is you staring at, Andy? There goes the sweetest looking gal I done ever see. So long, Amos, I'll see you later. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! <laughs> and Andy will be back in just a moment. Ladies, get a box of Rinso tomorrow first thing. Try it on the dishes. You'll whiz through the job in next to no time. And Rinso's safe suds are kind to your hands. Don't get them red and rough. And next wash day, try Rinso in your tub or washer. You'll soon be whistling while you wash. Rinso, white, happy little wash day song. Rinso, white, birdies sing it all day long. Your clothes are so white and the color so bright, you'll sing as you work along. Rinse a white, happy little wash day song. And now Amos and Andy have a few words of vital importance for all of us. Friends, careless talk can lengthen this war. Our government has definite proof that Germany is desperate for any scrap of information that may be able to postpone an Allied victory. So remember, if you hear it from someone, don't repeat it. If you see it yourself, don't repeat it. But if you've read it in the newspapers, magazines, or heard it on the radio, then you are free to talk. Good night, folks. be with us again next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Rinso will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Our thanks to Victor Moore, who will soon be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, Siegfeld Follies. This program is broadcast to our armed forces everywhere. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night to all of you from all of us and reminding you that the used fats you ladies turn in to help, help to supply the vital medicine so badly needed by our fighting men. Don't stop saving used fats. Turn in every pound to your butcher regularly. He'll give you four cents and two red points for every pound you turn in. You know, ladies, now that so many meats are back on the ration list, those extra red points are going to come in mighty handy. So don't forget, turn in every pound of used fats promptly. Why is Life Boy America's favorite bath soap? I'll tell you two big reasons. Life Boy in your daily bath gives all over protection from B.O. Yes, from head to toe, it stops B.O. And Life Boy gives protection that lasts and lasts. So play safe. Make sure Life Boy's in your soap dish. It's the only soap especially made to stop B.O. Broadcasting Company.